So then, guys, is there a worse feeling out there when this happens to you in Football Manager? So conceding the goal in stoppage time, while it's absolutely fantastic when you score one, conceding it is an absolute crippler. And as you've just seen there, that was Newcastle United against Spurs. We were at 2-2. Spurs scored in like the 93rd minute. So yeah, for us to drop all of the points. But I'm here to talk about how you would hold on to that lead. Now, you've seen a little bit of a disaster class there and lessons were learned. And I want to talk through them now. So the first thing is obviously to have quite a versatile tactic. Now for me, I'm playing the 4-3-1-2. I'm playing with that player behind my strikers, an attacking midfielder. But if I am winning, fair play, you know, and I get into the last 15 minutes and we start to look like we're going to be on the ropes, it's quite an easy change for us. The attacking midfielder then goes in behind the midfield, can play as an anchor man. I would then drop one of my strikers into the middle, and we are sorted like that. Naturally then, you would obviously want to make a change. Very good if you've obviously got that versatile player. So for me, Tillemans could go down there. Gonzalez into the midfield. I would only need to make one change. And we can be sorted like that. Or even better, just still play the two up top. And play with the defensive midfielder. And look at changing it to, you know, the anchor man. That is literally just going to sit there and shore up your defence. So... First of all, like I say, he's having a very versatile tactic. You can obviously have tactics preloaded up top. I am currently playing with the libero system like that. So for me, this tactic isn't versatile. And like I say, I have gone to the tactic that I've been using in my heart save. The anchorman role, as it is named there, the anchorman. So yes, a good tactic to set up with. Versatility is the key for that one. So next up then when we're talking about the tactics is also to look at the mentality. Now for me the worst thing that you can do is go very attacking. I will speak about that in another video. I have suffered so many times from trying to chase a game going very attacking. For me, you know, you, you're playing attacking at the minute. Would I then go down to a more cautious approach? Yes, especially if I am wanting to try and be a bit more defensive. I don't go any further than that. If I go very defensive, and yes, it says the aim of the mentality is to frustrate the opposition by reducing space and slowing things down, but then you just constantly invite the pressure. And if you were already on the ropes and you've identified that, the last thing you need is just to be trying to soak up pressure for the next 15 minutes. So you go cautious. Like I say, when you go on the cautious, you feel that you can break players down and you can potentially hit them on the counter. So that is the way to go with the mentality. Being out of possession again, obviously you can drop much deeper. If you think you're going to get caught out, you can obviously do a, demod, a lower defensive line, bring players back that way. That could be a way to go with it. But the big one is, is obviously then to try and start time wasting. You want to go full on time wasting, try and soak everything up, be more disciplined and you know where you stand. Don't be passing into space. Don't be messing about. Just try and soak up that pressure for the last, like I say, 50 minutes. You might do this even later. It might be the last five minutes. It's all about your players' fatigue as well. If your players are knackered, you can't ask them to do too much for you. You might just have to sit back and go basically with two banks of five. Next, then, realistically, is to sort out your corner routine. So if you're getting the ball up into the corners, naturally, you're obviously going to go time wasting. But you get that ball up into the corner and you manage to get a corner, a set piece from it, you want to then have quite a defensive tactic. Now, I have spoken before about attacking corners, really going for its near post. You know, let's be really aggressive. But sometimes you've just got to defend it. So for me, I would play the short corner. You've got one man at the near post. Someone there, should that ball come out, they can play it in, try and catch him napping. But you've got plenty of players back so you don't get caught out on the counter because that is the last thing you want. Players with plenty of pace you want are in those areas and yet you just want to be able to tank it back. And should a mistake happen here, you've got plenty of players that can then come and tide you up as well. So yeah, that's it for me then guys, how I would go about trying to be defensively tighter, handled onto a lead in that last 10-15 minutes. Especially like I say, when you play against that team that's had no shots all game, and you know when that highlight happens on the 91st minute, it's probably going to result in a goal. So hopefully these things that we've taken from today's episode will just stop that happening and completely eliminate it altogether. So there you go then guys, thank you very much for watching, little short tip for you today. As always, please stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ta-ra.